Hello students and welcome to today's chemistry class for SS1. Our topic today is going to be laws of chemical combinations. But before we go into the class proper, let me tickle your fancy a bit. Chemistry knows no country because it belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. You get it? Let's now take our lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, the student should be able to state the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportion, the law of multiple proportions, and the law of reciprocal proportions. The law of conservation of mass. This law states that the total mass of the reactants is equal to the total mass of the products in every chemical reaction. What this means is that the total mass of material present after the reaction should be equal to the one before the reaction. This law was discovered by Antoine Lavoisier in about 1789. And you can see his quote there, nothing is lost, nothing is created, everything is transformed. Matter is neither created nor destroyed during chemical reactions, but changes from one form to another. Let's now take a quick example to illustrate this law. In an experiment, 5.0 grams of CaCO3 on heating gave 2.8 grams of CaO and 2.2 grams of CO2. Show that the, these results are in accordance with the law of conservation of mass. Our solution now. CaCO3 to give us CaO plus CO2. Now, the weight of CaCO3 is equal to 5 grams. The weight of CaO is 2.8 grams, while the weight of CO2 is 2.2 grams. The total weight of the reactants should be equal to the total weight of the product. That is what this law says. So, 5.0 is equal to 2.8 plus 2.2 and that is 5.0 is equal to 5.0 since the mass of the reactants are equal to the mass of the products these results are in accordance with the law of conservation of mass let's now take a second example in an experiment 48 grams of magnesium combines with 32 grams of oxygen to form 80 grams of magnesium oxide. Show that this reaction illustrates the law of conservation of mass. You have a hint there giving you the equation of reaction and then the atomic masses of each of the elements. Now solution. 2 mg plus O2 will give us 2 mgO. Now, the weight of magnesium is 48 because there are two of them, 24 in two places. The weight of oxygen is 32 because it is 16 in two places. Weight of magnesium oxide is 80. Total weight of reactants is equal to the total weight of the products. That is, 48 plus 32 should be equal to 80. And on adding that, 80 is equal to 80. So these results are in accordance with the laws of conservation of mass. Let's now move on to the law of definite proportions. This law, sometimes known as the law of definite composition, 
was first enunciated by Joseph Proust in 1799. This law states that all pure samples of a particular chemical compound contain similar elements combined in the same proportion by mass. What this law essentially is saying is that if you take a pure sample of, let's say, table salt, if you take it in Nigeria, or you go to China, or you go to America, table salt, pure table salt, will always contain sodium and chlorine in the proportion one to one, wherever you take it. So let's take a look at this example. 1.375 grams of CuO were reduced by hydrogen and 1.098 grams of Cu were obtained. In another experiment, 1.178 grams of copper were dissolved in nitric acid and the resulting copper nitrate was converted to CuO by ignition. The weight of CuO formed was 1.476 grams. Show that these results prove the law of constant proportion. Solution experiment 1. Weight of CuO is equal to 1.375. Weight of Cu, that's copper, is equal to 1.098. Weight of oxygen will now be 1.375 minus the weight of the copper, 1.098. That will give us 0.277. Ratio of copper to hydrogen would be 1.098 to 0.277. And that's approximately 3.96 to 1. Let's take example 2. Weight of copper is 1.476, while the weight of copper is 1.178. If the weight of oxygen is removed, that is 1.476 minus 1.178, that will give us 0.298. The ratio of copper to oxygen will be 1.178 to 0.298 and that's approximately 3.96 to 1. In both experiments, the ratio of copper to oxygen is the same, 3.96 to 1. Hence, it illustrates the law of definite proportion. Moving on now, we go on to the law of multiple proportions. This law states that if two elements, A and B, combine to form more than one chemical compound, then the various masses of one element, A, which combines separately with a fixed mass of another element, B, are in simple multiple proportions. This law of multiple proportions was discovered by John Dalton at about the same time he postulated his atomic theory in 1803. Let's now take an example to illustrate this law. In an experiment, 34.5 grams of an oxide of a metal was heated so that oxygen was liberated and 32.1 grams of the metal was obtained. In another experiment, 119.5 grams of another oxide of the same metal was heated and 103.9 grams of the metal was obtained and oxygen was also liberated. Calculate the mass of oxygen liberated in each experiment and show that the data explain 
the law of multiple proportions. Now let's take a look at the solution. Weight of the metal oxide is 34.5 grams. Weight of the metal is 32.1 grams. Now, 32.1 grams of, of the metal combines with 2.4 grams of oxygen. One gram of the metal will combine with 2.4 grams divided by 32.1, that will be 0 0.075. Experiment 2. Weight of the oxide taken, 119.5 grams. Weight of the metal formed, 103. 0.9 grams. Weight of oxygen liberated, we are now going to deduct, and when you deduct uh, 103 from 119, we have 15.6 grams. Now, 103 grams of the metal combines with 55.6 grams of oxygen. One gram of the metal will combine with 15.6 divided by 103 times 1. That will give us 0 0.15014 grams of oxygen. Therefore, different weights of oxygen that combine with the fixed weight of the metal, one gram, that's the weight of the metal, are in a ratio 0 0.1501 to 0 0.075, and that's ratio 2 to 1. Moving on now, we go on to the law of reciprocal proportions. The law of reciprocal proportion states that the masses of several elements A, B, and C, which combine separately with a fixed mass to form D, are the same as or simple multiples of the masses in which A, B, C themselves combine with one another. Let's now take an example to illustrate this. One gram of sodium, let us assume sodium Na to be that uh, in our example A, is observed to combine with either 1.54 grams of chlorine, let's call chlorine B, or 5.52 grams of iodine, let's call iodine C. These ratios correspond to the modern formulas of NaCl and NaI, sodium chloride and sodium iodide. The ratio of these two weights is 5.52 divided by 1.54, that will give us 3.58. It is also observed that 1 gram of chlorine reacts with 1.19 grams of iodine. This ratio of 1.19 obeys the law because it is a simple fraction of 1 over 3 of 3.58. This is because it corresponds to the formula ICL3 which is one known compound of iodine and chlorine. Similarly, hydrogen, carbon and oxygen follow the law of reciprocal proportions. In essence, what this law is trying to say is, when A, B, and C can combine, if A and B combine to form a particular compound, the ratio with which they form, let's keep that aside. If the same A now goes to combine with C, it will form the same ratio, simply because A, B, and C can combine independently. Let's now take a quick look at the summary of what we have learned today. In this lesson, we learned about the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportions, the law of multiple proportions, and the law of reciprocal proportions. With this, we have come to the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching and see you in the next class.